and the International Relations Manager of Campus. We're based in Bologna. These are headquarters are based there. But um, we have uh, student residences all over the country. You can find um, very um, meaningful uh, research in the resources Grant pointed out uh, before. Certainly, um, what we've been trying to do at campus is offering students the best possible conditions for them to thrive at university. Um, today I will be discussing um, the Italian context so you have an idea of what the student housing scenario is like and how we tap into that. Uh, I'll pass on to the campus concept and how we developed the what we call the Collegio di Merito. I'll be explaining that in a second. And finally I'll be discussing engagement and retention. Now, let's start with this uh, beautiful picture uh, of one of our students uh, in, uh, in Bologna. Um, visiting one of the uh, most important uh, university cities, you'll certainly uh, notice straight away that the learning centers, uh, the libraries, and all the different departments are scattered throughout town. This means that students uh, need to immerse themselves straight away uh, in the city and need to move around a lot. Why did this happen? Um, Starting from Bologna, then moving to all the other cities, um, we can see that uh, the universities started from relatively small urban centers and then gradually had to expand to other parts of the city. But this was uh, highly fragmented. In fact, they had to occupy buildings that, in theory, were devoted to other purposes. Um, this also meant that uh, the housing uh, for scholars um, were scattered around town and not always tied completely to university as in other models. We have a very interesting example of collegiate halls, um, which uh, of course uh, helped the Peregrinatio Academica, the scholars that traveled throughout Europe and to Bologna, first and foremost. Uh, but from the 15th century onwards, uh, the Collegi di Merito, so uh, collegiate halls uh, based on merit, uh, started to develop. Uh, these were places where uh, scholars could, uh, of course, live and um, pursue their studies. Um, they were based on merit and they tried to pursue social advancement um, for those participating in the activities. Uh, moving on to campus, uh, and what we do at campus, um, we started in 1980 and we started because uh, our CEO was in dire need of accommodation for himself and his friends. At that time, of course, uh, student housing was um, relatively inexistent. Um, and uh, on top of that, the regulation enacted in 1980 meant that landlords uh, no longer really benefited from the private rental market towards students. So they were kicked out, they had to find another, another solution. And this is how they started creating a cooperative student could uh, rent uh, apartments from this cooperative and then gradually we started uh, creating uh, living learning residences which are exactly the Collegi di Merito that I mentioned and also uh, tied to that uh, a whole range of other possibilities for students because we decided to cater to the needs of the students at different stages of their academic career starting from the very first years and then gradually on towards um, maybe later stages of their lives and reaching even the alumni and uh, possible employment with us. So we um, were present in 15 university cities, um, we currently have 7,000 beds and we also um, cater to the needs of uh, study abroad providers um, wanting to have a real uh, immersive experience with Italian students and in fact we have an American college uh, in one of our campus residences. And this really provides a living learning environment for both the Italian and the American, American students. We'll be also expanding abroad, but today we'll be discussing residence life. So I'll move on to some of the, uh, mm, some pictures of uh, what our living learning residences look like. Uh, these are hybrid models. So we also host, um, as I said, liberal providers. Uh, corporate and leisure travelers for short-term stays. Uh, and of course, every time you start digging in Italy, you find archaeological remains and you need to stop all the construction work, obviously. So in Bologna, we decided to incorporate archaeological remains into the design of the building. And I strongly invite you to come and visit us. Uh, and this is our most recent 
opening in Palermo. Um, unfortunately, the class of 2020 decided to go to Milano for the Italy region session, a very gray city. But what can you do? We'll do it next time, all right? This is more, much better, come on. <laughs> the view from uh, the window of the room in Milano is different. Huh? I can do my best, but it's not the same time, okay? Now, this is in Rome, and uh, another very recent one. And so what do you find? when you um, enter one of our living learning residences. So there's the residential services, and of course you would have single or double rooms, you would normally there in suite, you have a canteen, good food, and then you would have um, the uh, opportunity of using a shared kitchen as well. Uh, you have recreational rooms, you have a gym, you have a music room, uh, that normally uh, we host a lot of conferences and workshops, so there are several rooms for that. We have tutor rooms because the tutors are really part of our educational experience. So our, all of our buildings cater to that need. And then of course, there's the added value of campus itself. And these are the core elements of our living learning environments. Now, what, uh, what we do now, uh, first of all, numbers are small. So we don't have huge numbers in our uh, living learning residences. And this makes a difference because we forge relationships uh, with each and every student, and we try to create connections among the students and with the, with the community at large. And with this, I mean the local community, but also the community of researchers, scholars, and companies that we work with. So it's an in-depth engagement with us, but also with the community at large. Students um, need to feel safe, certainly, uh, families strongly rely on us for them to be safe, to feel safe. And as you can imagine, we have a strong connection with families. And uh, they need to uh, perceive very clearly that the, the children are taken care of, yes. And yes, we do have an educational approach to all aspects of students' life. We see, us, we see uh, campus as a natural extension of the classroom but not in a boring manner. Now, this is important because um, students uh, that access our living learning residences uh, have the opportunity of benefiting from personal professional development. Uh, they can have tutors to support them in their studies. Um, they can participate in um, business research projects. We can help them develop their own research career they can tap into a very wide array of opportunities. Um, certainly, all of our staff have um, a very, very strong ethics of care, and we strongly believe in personal and professional development. Um, we create a personalized path for every student, and this is why numbers are important, because we spend a lot of time um, creating an educational path um, a development path for each and every student. And in terms of uh, student to staff ratio, now we have um, a permanent base of staff members, and so you would have one to 40, um, one staff member to 40 students, but on top of that, then you have all the other uh, professionals that work with us and work with the students. So we have the tutors, uh, we have the career service um, people that have them forge their um, career development path, and um, we have all the consultants that work with us, so it's even higher. But this is, the, let's say, the, the baseline. Um, and on top of that, another very interesting thing is that students are not isolated in one residence hall, but they're part of a national network. This means that they work together in projects, and they met, uh, for example, last Sunday um, uh, for a very tough um, football match, and I think Torino won, I have to check, but it was, uh, it was fierce. Uh, but they, they're really part of a network, they can access um, resources, staff members, opportunities, they can be part of projects, and they can form teams and, and work with students everywhere in Italy with us. Certainly, um, our, our purpose is to make sure they have an incredibly rewarding uh, experience at university and within our residences. At the same time, uh, we ob obviously want them to stay with us. 
Um, certainly, we need to put our principles into practice. We need to um, create meaningful um, practice-based opportunities for the students. Um, and in fact, one of the myths, and I'm sure you experience that of residence life, is that uh, the, the project, the program that you devised will be cool for the students. It doesn't happen that way because it's, it has to be student driven and students need to be part of the programming. Otherwise, it might work, but you have higher chances of being successful it's, if it's customized on the basis of the students' needs. Um, and we see, it, we see our work as part of a wider learning experience. In fact, if you think about it, our work is very meaningful in terms of uh, how it ties into the universities and the city's strategies towards creating learning hubs, towards um, improving the attractiveness of their university and attracting and retaining talent. So um, it's, we, we connect with the universities in that many different ways. Um, we are a private non-profit operator. We uh, invest all of our revenue into our activities. Students pay a premium for uh, our living learning residences. They might also, depending on the merit and on their income, uh, receive grants to stay with us. Universities partner with us in different ways. It can be with a public, pu public private partnership. They might, us, they might want us to uh, manage buildings for them. Um, they might want us to organize to student housing in a city for them. So there are, there are different ways we partner with them. Uh, certainly, we've been uh, doing this for quite a number of years, and um, we also have developed our own philosophy and um, our own strategies to deal with different uh, challenges that uh, are somehow similar to what you face, even if the context is different. I'm going to show you a few examples of what we do uh, this is the drone lab. In Torino, we certainly have many engineers. I have to specify that our living learning residences are not themed. So we welcome students from very different universities. They stay with us. And the interdisciplinary nature of our workshops is very, very meaningful for them. And uh, this is one of them. So they are, they are building drones. Uh, there are different teams in different parts of Italy and there will be a competition at the end. There's also a, um, a business creativity uh, competition going on at the moment with a Palermo winning at this stage. Now, this is another, this is me shouting. I was petrified at the Lingotto racetrack. Um, this is the uh, project I'm very fond of. And again, it's all about cross-pollinating and accelerating students' development. Um, imagine students studying psychology uh, design, architecture, social sciences, and anthropology. Put them together and ask them to work with uh, patients with mental conditions and ask them to uh, develop uh, pieces of furniture, of elements that you can use in a room um, that are meaningful and beautiful for all. And this is, this is a uh, social design, it's an inclusive design workshop. Uh, that have, we've been running for three years, which is incredibly rewarding for all parties involved. And it's also a manner for students to explore different career paths and to engage with one another and to work in teams. And in fact, we, we also work with uh, companies supporting us in this project. We receive external funding for this project and uh, it's credit bearing. So students go through a selection and if they're accepted, they're part of this workshop. And then, uh, well, it's, it's an incredible experience. You can find more information online. And uh, we, in March, we finished the last edition. And uh, when I'm in NAFSA, they'll hold another one at a local, um, local lab with other, with other companies. And why do I, what do I mean with cross-pollinating? I mean working with uh, lecturers. Many lecturers are fond of our model because they see the sparkle in the students' eyes, because they see true engagement, because they see uh, an opportunity for doing things that sometimes universities cannot uh, do uh, because of lack of resources or uh, funding or places 
or just opportunities. Um, it means working with companies, it means working across the board with uh, uh, consultants that also believe in our model. And it also means that from day one, our student can start understanding uh, what it means going into one profession or the other. Because there's a career service manager organizing in every city different opportunities for them. Um, and it also means that um, a student can have access to um, researchers that are already in the field and maybe develop projects with them. They can, uh, they can tap into the network that we have. Um, this is one of our career service managers. Fierce competitors. And again, community building, because of course, um, students come from all over. Uh, we need to make sure they get accustomed to the city and get to know each other. And you can do that in so many ways, even in a rather inexpensive way. And we'll get to that during the discussion. Um, before, I mentioned the fact that we cater to the needs of the students in different ways and at different levels. Um, you can imagine, uh, average Italian family will be very happy to send the students to a Collegio di Merito campus for the first two years. We'll certainly take care of the students, certainly. After that, the student might want to venture into something else and might want to go into an apartment. That's fine, we've got you covered, we have apartments. But you're still part of our network. And at the end of your academic career, you can be part of our alumni association. And this lady in particular, she now works for us. You're welcome to send me uh, emails to request information. You can ask me questions, anything you want.